Lang robots are stepping out of the lab and into the real world, from construction site to planetary exploration. Joining us today to talk about this new era of mobility is Professor Marco Hutter from ETH Zurich. Professor Hutter, it's great to have you with us today. We know that Lang robots has been advancing rapidly in recent years. Can you describe where the fields we stand today as humanoids and quadrupeds move into real world use? As you said, we did uh, big leaps over the last years. Hardware was transforming, it's now available everywhere. We have much better compute. We can do controls through machine learning based approach, which gives these machines the ability to essentially walk in arbitrary environments. And we also start to slowly and better understand the world in order to do autonomous navigation. So we're using these machines for different types of applications. Uh, it can be from a research point of view, like purely curiosity driven exploration, hiking in the mountains, underground areas, even like space applications where we want to send these robots into lunar caves to do explorations. But then also from an uh, industrial point of view, where we're uh, applying legged systems, for example, in inspection. So they move around facilities, use cameras, thermal images in order to monitor the environment. So what advance in perception, planning and reinforcement learning has been the most transformative, enabling this new era of mobility and autonomy? I think reinforcement learning has been transformative in general. So we had very complex model-based control architecture, which needed a lot of expertise, year-long uh, developing of software stacks. And, and now using reinforcement learning, people can much quicker iterate and get much more robust uh, locomotion pipelines and auto navigation pipelines. At the same time, we started to understand in how we can incorporate perception much closer into the locomotion algorithms. So today we are essentially directly taking, for example, a depth input stream that comes from a stereo camera or a LiDAR, integrate that into the training pipeline and let the robot learn to kind of see the world, feel the world, and then apply the control accordingly. So uh, next, can you share an example where one of your robots from ETH uh, University has proven its value in real world setting? So I think robots in general that work at university, they never prove real world value. We are there to build the basic technology. But what we're doing then is we are kind of spinning this out through companies, either in by existing companies or by creating new startups, and they do the commercialization of that. So they make more robust systems and they go to the customers and deploy that. So for example, we created Anibotics about 10 years ago, which is a company commercializing industrial grade quadrupeds to do uh, inspection tasks. They work on chemical plants, and, and nuclear plants in underground area, mines and minerals. So all places which are typically very hard to reach for humans or dangerous or expensive to send humans, even offshore areas. And now you can just have the robots there and they do the works. Yeah, but even though we also know that like leg robots are becoming more and more capable and accessible. So what industry or environment that you see uh, being transformed first? I think in the beginning, it's going to be areas where we have relatively simple tasks that these robots can do. So, for example, manipulation, interaction, maintenance operation is still super complex. So you better do something where you can, by observing, by measuring, by monitoring, create value for customers. That's visual inspection, thermal inspection, gas leak searches, can be on construction site that you do kind of uh, update monitoring of uh, figuring out how, how much they have progressed. Uh, it can be surveillance in security applications. So area where these robots just move around and watch the world without interacting with it. Uh, looking ahead, what's the next big leap we need to make to bring uh, humanoids and quadrupeds into everyday life and work? I think for the humanoids, the big difference to the quadrupeds is that they have arms and hands. And obviously what you want to achieve is to make them do useful jobs, also including dexterous manipulation. And that's probably the big challenge today. I think we have the technology and the knowledge to make these robots move in our daily environments. Maybe not the most complex climbs, but at least in industry areas, in homes. But when it comes to interaction, to doing complex manipulation tasks, I think that's where we still have to do a lot of research. Yeah. Thank you. And we look forward to uh, more of the technology uh, being applied into our daily life. And thank you for sharing with us today. It's great to have you. Uh, we hope to see you next year. Thanks a lot. Pleasure.